And welcome, welcome, folks. Today we're going to take a look at some different items from the Met, uh, the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art. Very interesting and cool. They actually have so many different parts of their collection online that you can look through it. And a lot of it is uh, uh, in public domain. Uh, so if you have pro projects or any research you're trying to do, um, a lot of it's really accessible and the photos are even usable. So that's great. Um, if you like antiques, if you like looking at this kind of stuff, make sure to hit the subscribe, drop the like, follow the channel, let us know which of these was your favorite. Today we're going to take a look at some different cloisonne items and point out a couple things. I know there's a lot of questions that people have about cloisonne, and cloisonne is particularly difficult. Uh, it's particularly difficult. Um, it hasn't necessarily received the same type of like academic uh, attention that uh, porcelain has. Um, so there's a lot less resources out there, and a lot of people, you know, really aren't too sure what they're looking at. Um, one of the really nice things of uh, going through the Met collection is, you know, we do have confidence in these items. They have provenance. Uh, we know where they're from, and uh, we can take a look at that. So uh, some things I wanted to look at here. Here's a nice mid-19th century item. Um, Let's see if, uh, vibrated horn, yeah, I'm not necessarily, I mean, I would assume this is a sort of decorative piece or a relic, a scepter, uh, that one would hold, but let's take a look at this up close. Uh, one of the things that's really, uh, really interesting and important here is going to be taking a look at this, this fill, the fill within the cloisonne and taking a look at how the lines were put together and... Uh, you can see here, I mean, at least I can see here, these lines appear to be uh, hand done. And for the most part, no color escapes the lines. And I, when I say escapes the lines, it means this fill color doesn't bleed out into the base. The base does bleed into the fill color, but that's okay. That happens. And here... You know, it's nice to see this dragon over here uh, looking very 19th century. Um, so that is some that adds some great confidence. You'll also notice these sort of more natural looking wear holes that are on this. Um, in uh, items, a lot of items that have been artificially aged or attempted to have been artificially aged, um, you won't quite see or the, you'll see them and they'll even they'll look more pronounced than they do on this because um, so this I mean we've got what maybe a hundred hundred and fifty two hundred years of age on this item um, and we've just barely got these wear holes I mean they're 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 occasionally all over the place but um, you might notice newer pieces have tons of these and they're much larger and often you can just see straight down to the metal because they're not naturally worn um, so this is a cool quite a cool piece I mean I would I would I would be very happy to find this in the wild um, but let's move on to what do we have next oh yes a mandala base I thought this was a really cool one um, and the nice thing here is we've got a uh, Tibet uh, some Tibetan Buddhist motifs we've got a really nice teal blue ground cloisonne item which is uh, you know pretty typical for the time period uh we've got it's a you know this is a ming mandala base so to the about the early 15th century so quite old six seven hundred years old um maybe about four or five hundred years older than the item we were just looking at um, and you can see the sort of the differences in the colors and how the colors age differently over here we've got uh, blue has quite a bit more vibrance to it it's not it doesn't seem as uh, almost like a little bit dirty uh, here uh, over time and we can take a look let's get in close and see what we've got you see as I was saying how this cloisonne uh, starts to the teal ground background starts to uh, get a little uh, patchy in its coloring as it ages I mean this item's only about six seven hundred years old so that's understandable. And here you'll notice the interesting thing here on this Ming piece is we see about the amount of wear that people try to fake for 19th 
and early 20th century pieces of cloisonne. And I know in the previous look, I was talking about how usually you don't have infill colors bleeding out. We do have a little bit of it here. Um, you know, that's probably due to the size of the wires that were used when they were making this cloisonne. Um, and maybe uh, some things went off a little bit in the furnace. But overall, the, uh, the lines are really well done. Yeah, you can see right here, you know, we might be a little shallow on some wires. So you might have had some color bleeding because of that. But this is a lovely, lovely little lotus base. Um, really kind of spectacular to see this amount of handwork. Uh, in a cloisonne piece. And the nice thing about this one, oh, we do get to see the base. Let's see that brass underside. It's unmarked. That's what six, seven hundred years of age looks like. And the nice thing here, we've got the provenance. It looks like it was sold by a London firm uh, to the MMA in 1992. So we've got some confidence. It would be really nice to know where it came from before that. Um, but uh, that's all right. So. Moving on. Here, this one I picked because I thought it was actually quite an interesting subject, and there were some things that were worth talking about here. There were some things that are really worth talking about. Um, this one is a bit more worn, and it looks uh, it looks closer to uh, you know what someone might imagine for older cloisonne. Let's see, we have late 15th, early 16th century. So we're looking at another Ming piece of cloisonne, but you'll notice this teal ground background has worn a lot more. Uh, I might wonder if this plate had sat out in the sun for maybe 100 or even 200 years to get this coloration to look the way that it does. Um, overall, we've got a really nice piece with well done lines. Um, Interesting to get this raised uh, this raised edge here on a cloisonne plate. Uh, it would have taken a little bit of extra work. And of course, we have to comment on just the phenomenal, phenomenal working to get these ducks in here. Great figures. Some great duck figures here in the middle. And you see the little feet down there as well. Per usual, we've got some pretty typical colors in here, but this scene is a little bit different, and uh, this is quite a rare piece of cloisonne. Let's see where it came from. We've got the provenance. Looks like uh, it was sold to the MMA in 2011, so not a lot of information, but perhaps... Um, yeah, this just describes it as Ming... A lot of things to a lot of a lot of interesting things about this one. I wish we could see the underside. I wonder if that blue looks different on that backside. So moving through, this is one that I really wanted to look at because I think that it is so 1929. This was donated. That's great because uh, this is an item that, in my mind, looks like a lot of the items that are. Uh, potentially less than savory that you might see on eBay. So let's take a close look at this vase here, the uh, sort of double mythical beast vessel. I think it's phenomenal. I wonder if this was, uh, I mean, it looks like a scroll vase to me, like you would put scrolls in these, but maybe not. Maybe with this off you would have, uh, you would do some sort of flower pairings. Um, but the thing I really wanted to look at here was to get up close to this ground so that we can see uh, up close uh, 200, 300 year old cloisonne and also look at some of the other parts on here. Um, it looks like we have you know, some polished brass, potentially uh, gilt bronze um, that is kind of starting to wear away here. Um, it, it might be, it looks like it probably is a little bit of gilt. But the big thing to look at here is, it, uh, so, in the 18th century, when we transition out of the Ming Dynasty, Cloisonne, um, Cloisonne changes just a little bit, you know, it's not quite, let's take a look back here, you know, we have, this is early Ming, we've got our early Ming pattern, and yeah, this is a more Buddhist, a Buddhist form. And it's designed for a specific purpose, but you see the sort of evolution of this patterning uh, into these sort of squiggly lines that are 
so common in cloisonne these days so some of the things to look for here is we want to make sure you know these curls are nice and that they come back around um, it's one of the ways in which we're able to tell if things have been hand worked or not is how the wires look and machined wires look very specific it's very easy to tell up close and these are very well done and very interesting but you'll notice that even here the coloration isn't necessarily perfect and we do have we have more bleeding in than bleeding out which is good that's certainly more desirable we do have a couple instances where there's a little bleed out but overall this is very very well made this would have been a, a extremely high quality item and it's interesting to see all of this sort of white wear I'm not necessarily certain what that is, and I haven't seen that too often. Um, so I won't make any speculations. It might just be age over time, or it could be uh, something that this was placed near, uh, maybe some uh, something wearing on to the cloisonne. Um, but a very cool piece, very cool piece. And this is, you know, if I go onto eBay and I want to look at some things that are less than savory, they will look like this, but they will look nothing like this up close. So, pretty cool item. And here, talking about things that, uh, you know, we kind of find faked on eBay quite a bit. Here we have a very special early Ming sensor. Very special early Ming sensor. Let's take a look at the provenance. Um, let's see. Tokyo, 1889. And so this was acquired in the uh, late 20th century. It looks about right to me to be a Ming, uh, Ming sensor. So some cool things about this, again, we've got this sort of, uh, it looks a little bit more Buddhist. So this would be probably a Buddhist uh, type sensor. It's probably not, It's, it's probably not like necessarily a temple wear. This would probably be a family's item um, in a nicer house. And one of the cool things here that really does uh, take me back to uh, Ming is this color, the color palette here. Um, this strange use of blue, red, yellow, and white is something that you don't tend to see uh, that often, especially as we get closer and closer to modern times. Um, so that's a great sign here and up top, you know, we've got the uh, very Chinese almost fleur de lis, uh, fleur de -lis type pattern that really shows us uh, that this, I mean, it shows us as a Chinese piece, of course, but uh, it helps us date it. And we've got some really nice working on these handles as well. That kind of sets this piece apart, really uh, makes it a little bit different because quite often you're going to see these handles are just... Uh, left as brass. So overall, very nice, very nice. If you see these colors together and you're starting to see some signs of ages, you might have a very, very nice Ming piece in front of you. And here's what I wanted to take a look at. Uh, we've got, <laughs> what's our provenance here? Um, good. All right. So I was hoping it would be something like this. So donated in 1929. And this is what I wanted to take a look at. It's a bummer that there's not a base for us to inspect. Um, this patterning on here, this patterning is often, often patterning that's associated with the late 19th century. You know, we've moved on from the clouds, late 19th century, early 20th century, you know, looking at kind of like 1890 to 1930, this sort of patterning is coming into style. We've moved on from the clouds. We've moved on from the squiggles. The modern world is here with all of its modern lines. And we're starting to replicate that in the background, in the ground base of our uh, cloisonne on enamel. So that is going to be our base. We're getting this sort of uh, very modern aesthetic style pattern. Uh, very art deco-y and again we have the nice uh, flowers well done some great mixing of color in here um, and some good color mix over there let's see we've got 
um, the base around the top. And this one is, interestingly enough, looks a little off-centered. Maybe it's the way the photo was taken. Um, but probably another good sign that this is well done and hand-worked. Um, it's always very easy to point to a provenance that says it was acquired in 1929. Um, but that does give some age, that does show us this has some age to it. It's probably early 20th century. And there's a couple uh, key giveaways here. First of all, it's really nice to see this edge around the rim um, in this style. Uh, that gives me some encouragement. Obviously, the provenance is a starting point. And this top, sort of more, uh, less rounded top, was something that was pretty popular uh, around the turn of the century. So... Here we have another Buddha's bowl. You know, you start to see the differences here as we get closer to the 20th century and going further back. Uh, if you didn't know, or if this item had no provenance, it wasn't gifted uh, in 1929, you might think this was relatively new. There are things about it that don't necessarily look right. The base, having uh, an enameled base, is something that some people might think is not so good. Um, there's all sorts of other things. I mean, it certainly, it's certainly difficult when, you know, this is what one looks like from a uh, hundred years ago, and this is what one looks like from maybe six or seven hundred years ago, because this one doesn't necessarily look as worn as this one. So there's some things we can tell here. You know, we got when we get in close, we start to see that. Uh, coloration, discoloration that only happens with age. Um, personally, I actually kind of like some minor damage on my cloisonne because it gives me uh, strong encouragement that uh, the item is real. Though this portion right here looks like a repair that might have been made uh, when the enamel was being fired. So hard to speculate on that one. But overall, a really lovely piece here. And we're starting to move a little quicker because I would like to end the video here. But um, very, very nice. And of course, a nice reminder, uh, you know, if you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button, definitely do it. We really appreciate you all hanging out with us and uh, talking some antiques and going through some of these um some of these different types of Chinese cloisonne and talking about them a little bit. Here we have very interesting, hopefully until 1880 donated to MMA. All right, cool. There's one thing I wanted to look at. Oh, excellent. This is awesome. So what a great piece for us to take a look at here. So this is cloisonne in process, a sort of deconstructed Wow, this is great. For the 19th century, this is one of the coolest pieces of uh, art that I've seen from the 19th century. This is so cool. So we have all of the enameled colors that are broken down. Uh, we have um, here the four different versions of uh, the cloisonne vase being made. We have the, uh, um, the form. And then we put on the wires in the second one, and then we start to fill in the color. And then finally, we've completely filled in the color and fired the item. And this is what we call cloisonne on brass enamel work, because it's actually enamel that's built up. It's built up on top of a brass or bronze ground, and then it's fired until it hardens. And this is just such a cool look at the process. All right, a special piece. This is a special piece. It was, again, donated in that 1929 uh, big cloisonne donation that the museum got. This one is extravagant. I think this is uh, early 20th century. I'm not certain. I think this is, uh, it could be a little bit older, though, getting the Greek, Greek key stylization on the uh, uh, rim is a good indication. The leaves uh, down also tend to tell me uh, this is probably 19th century. We do have a lot of wear on this one, and I wonder if that is due to where it was located. This looks like it would be uh, in a very prominent place. You would certainly want to display something like this. Um, 
So we say donated in 1929. Uh, we have no specific date other than uh, potentially Qianlong to uh, the end of the Qing Dynasty, which <laughs> is about 400, 300, 400 years. Um, and my uh, literacy is crap at the moment. Hopefully one day it won't be, so I'm not entirely certain uh, what we have written on the vases. But really some great colorization. And it's cool to see, you certainly see signs of handwork if you get up close. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal vase. Let's take another look at this one. I mean, this is just great. That is really something special. Sort of double gourd pattern uh, with writing. Well done, out of the ordinary, with the leaves and the Greek key on the base and the rim. Superb. Superb. All right, and last thing that we'll end with. I actually thought this was a cool one to end with. Obviously, this is not Chinese. Uh, we wanted to take a look at it nonetheless. Here we have what we call uh, chinoiserie, um, sort of the decorative style that became popular after... Uh, after contact between Europe and uh, um, China was really re-established. And I can't tell, is this actual cloisonne or is it painted to look like cloisonne? Yeah, so that's interesting. So this is actually not cloisonne. It's a Christopher Dresser work that is painted to look like it um, and reflects this sort of Chinese and Japanese influence that was so popular in the 19th century. Um, so one of the things, one of the reasons why I did bring this up is that the Chinese stylization tends to stay pretty consistent through time. So when you see something like this that looks like it's Chinese in style, but doesn't necessarily adhere to some of the more frequent or common design patterns, um, like here, you know, we've got this rim that's certainly very Chinese. This neck is right here is very Chinese. And we have this very Chinese uh, um, leaf pattern up at the top. Um, these things are very reminiscent of 19th century Chinese art. Uh, so we are pretty confident about that one. But this sort of patternization is one that doesn't really exist anywhere. I have not seen in any Chinese items, and that's because it's a sort of a European reimagining of these other patterns. It's a reimagining of these other patterns. So uh, keep your eye out for that. Of course, this is still a valuable item in its own respect, but it's just not Chinese, nor is it cloisonne. So a fun way to end here. Fun way to end here. Let me know in the comments below which of these was your favorite. Um, you know, is there anything else you'd want me to cover specifically? I'm really a big fan of cloisonne, so I hope you enjoyed the video. And, um, of course, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to drop the like and follow along. We really appreciate it, folks. Hope you have a great rest of your day.